So who are you? What do you do? I'm Will and I write for the Crafty Pint. What's your favourite beer style? Favourite beer style? West Coast IPAs. Because you'd be seeing a lot of styles to write about, right? Yeah. Does it ever change or it's always been West Coast? Um, no, yeah, look, I, I, I'm pretty into dark beers as well, stouts. And, you know, I get some sent great beers that I love writing about, but, you know, I still find myself when I go to a pub and want to have a beer, that's pretty quickly the kind of beer I want to drink. If we go through like favorite hop, favorite yeast, favorite this, do you, do you have those? Um, I don't know, what's the yeast, what are the yeast you sell? All those ones. <laughs> <laughs> But like, you know, yeah, no, I mean, I, like I, a saison, or do you, I mean, West Coast is going to be a West Coast IPA style ale. Yeah. We're on a really narrow <laughs> road. It's pretty bumpy as well, isn't it? <laughs> it's one of those roads that could at any second turn into dirt as well. Like, it's, 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 it's also kind a of borderline. With the turning circle of this thing. After 300 meters, turn right. Oh, yeah. Did you go to BrewCon? I did go to BrewCon. How was BrewCon for you? Yeah, it was really good. Uh, a lot of good guests, always good. I, I actually, I was a bit jet lagged. I was just coming back from a month in Europe. Turn so right. it was uh, very good to catch up with everyone, both in Melbourne and the industry from across the country too. How am I on that side? You are completely clear. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? Dicey. What did you think of Brucon? I had a great time. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, I think it was um, really well laid out this year. Yeah. And definitely um, just just the structure, like you could you could interact a lot more. I found this year. They kind of gave you more time on the. Uh trade floor and stuff didn't they which yeah. which is good i think that's really important you want yeah i mean you spend so much time having sort of conversations there with people that aren't as long as you want them to be because then <laughs> the next person comes along and you kind of you, you're trying to catch up with everyone yeah. it's, it's good to have as much time as possible to really chat and and talk to people you might only see once a year do you reckon there's a time limit on like there's no good conversation after X time? Like would it be there's no good conversation after 11? 11 p.m. or a.m.? <laughs> p.m.? Uh, Unless I've been out the night the whole night? <laughs> I don't know. I've, I, I always get told great stuff after 11 o'clock. The problem is talking to people the next day and getting, getting them to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bit hard. Yeah, that's my challenge. <laughs> What do you think everyone is doing right or wrong in the industry right now? Um, what's everyone doing right or wrong? Okay, let's start with right. I think people have a focus on quality like never before. It's kind of seems like it's just a takeaway thing at the moment. I think there's more good quality, high quality beer in this craft beer in the Australian market than there's definitely ever been and in the last two years or so quality has jumped I think one thing we need to look at for what what people aren't doing as well is we need to look at as the industry matures people you know businesses need to mature with it I, I worry about how all these small businesses how much everyone's working in them how, how much time people working how many hours they're doing um, and that's owners as well as employees, but owners sort of set a standard and it means people get hired and work incredibly long hours as well. And I uh, worry that that burns through people who are really passionate and really knowledgeable and really good at their jobs very quickly. Hmm. What do you think the next brewing trend is going to be? Next brewing trend? I don't know. But I do know we're just going to see more and more limited releases and more and more types of IPA, definitely. I, that's not really a trend, but what's going on right now, it's just going to keep going. I don't, I don't see 
any sign of how it could possibly slow down. And maybe we don't want it to, I don't know. I like, I like there always being new beers. Since you get sent a lot of beers, and I mean, you all do it at Crafty, what do you think the biggest common issues you see with the beers? Um, I, I think there's there's still some beers that um, oxygen's probably oxygen pickup. It's probably a big one. Yeah. Um, Diacetol's probably would be the next next big one. Big fault. Is that in exi existing brewers diacetyl or is it just new startups? Look, there's there's definitely more. Yeah, it depends on the. It, it's yeah. If, it's new breweries with new kits that don't, I think, um, who maybe haven't been brewing on them for that long and then jump into packaging. That's probably the big thing. But you kind of, I don't know, I mean, sometimes breweries start out contracts and they're using someone's kit and a very experienced brewer. So they, they kind of hit the ground running um, yeah. better than you would if you're, you're new to your own system. How do you think the availability of brewing education is in Australia for brewers? Uh, it's it's good. It's getting better. I think you know the stuff Rich from Young Henry's has been doing with the IBA is really exciting, uh, and, and where he's trying to take things. Uh, I mean, it's it's never been better. I just um, wonder if we're still sort of growing too quickly to really have time to pause and give people enough time to properly educate and to properly After train staff. 400 meters, turn left, then turn... There you go, I've muted it. <laughs> what was that? I've muted the GPS. Ah, nice. Uh, Surely we can get a famous person. I know. Voice on there, like... I know. We shouldn't have to listen to a robot. Bloody Reynolds. Whoa. Here we go. Okay, this is actually a major road. This is good. I was worried. Where I was... We're gonna get a bit lost. Yeah. Turn left. It's just, it's just the epic waiting. The whole safe gap thing. need in the industry is right now probably hmm biggest need that's a tough one maybe there, there could be a you know a few less people focusing on getting their beers on as many shelves as possible and those beers languishing on them for a very long time and to people i think to be a bit more realistic about best before and use by dates i think you know I, I personally don't believe big beers really can last much longer than six months or can't even make it to six months but you still go into a damn murphy's or a big retail and there's a lot of beer being sold at nine months 10 months, 12 months, I think. I mean, I know No one's that serious about that. We asked you what your favorite brewery was. Is that like a question you can't answer? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would prefer not to answer that. <laughs> They're all good. They're all, I enjoy them all <laughs> as much as the last one. They all deserve. Do you have a favorite place. hop? A favorite what? Hop. Type of hop. Oh, do I have a favorite hop? Oh. I love Galaxy. I love uh, Mosaic and Amarillo. Amarillo. Yeah. And Amarillo and like an American Pale or something is really a thing of beauty. What about malts? No, I don't have a favourite malt. Have you ever eaten malts? Still like... the two-row. Yeah, yeah, plenty Do of times. At beer bar, a couple of beers bars I went to in uh, Belgium, they give it to you as a, you know, instead of pretzels or peanuts or something. They're in chill. Wow, yeah, okay. they give it to you to, to, to chew on. So where did you go in Europe, and what were the highlights of that? Uh, UK, Belgium, and Germany. Awesome. Yeah, uh, the highlights on the beer front. Uh, Germany was pretty incredible. Like. <clears throat> 
there was so much, you know, that time in summer where the days are so long, there was so much happening, so much celebration, so much beer being drunk and enjoyed. <clears throat> so many different styles going from Dusseldorf down to Munich, you know, the way it oh, changes yeah. as you move through the country. And it's kind of, you know, you, you get on one of these hour and a half trains and you get off in the city and the entire culture and feeling around beers and styles of beers is completely different. That's pretty amazing thing to experience. And then compared to, like, what was your favourite out of the three? So, I mean, Belgium is amazing. They're all amazing, but which was your favorite, more, more popular for beer that you thought was the For beer, the probably, I, there was probably some some of the best beers I had were in Belgium, yeah, definitely. I'll tell you what, I thought the quality in the UK was pretty hit and miss, really. Yeah. In terms of craft beer, but also cask. I, all, I, I think, you know, just, I had some great beers from some great breweries, but... There were a lot of places we went to, and there were a lot of there was beers getting sold that would clearly had faults. Um, I would say the quality of Melbourne, if, if you you know plucked out any five breweries, you'd find the quality would be far better than some of the breweries I was drinking from. So I mean, some of those UK beers, their style guidelines to have those things like play a little low. Yeah, example. yeah, yeah. I, I guess I'm more talking about them. I, I mean. Some of the cast was just no good, but uh, we're talking about some of the newer craft breweries where they are going for that hazy IPA or hoppy lager or all, all those kind of things that are that, that make them very similar to what we're going for in Australia or America's, American breweries are going for. I just thought a lot of the execution was, was poor. And then how do you find, um, you know, when you're trying those beers here, yeah. Obviously, you're realizing a lot of flavor issues. Um, but what about um, balance, sessionability? Of Australian beer? Of Australian beer. Yeah, I think, I think we've come a long way. People kind of like to paint caricatures of craft beer sometimes as being like, oh, you go into a bar and it's all just incredibly bitter IPAs or incredibly juicy ones or you know no one understands a lager or something but I mean you know on this trip we've drunk some ales and brown ales and stuff yeah. like that that I would say are incredibly restrained and balanced and uh, pretty good I don't know I'm just an optimist I guess <laughs> This is quite scenic out here. Is this a oh, is. dam or a river, I guess? It's huge. It might be a real big dam. Yeah. Although it's going for quite a while, so maybe... The Tokul Homestead. So which brewery on the way to now? Tin Shed. Tin Shed. This is in Foster, right? No. No. Uh, Dungong? Dungog? Dungog. That's it. <laughs> yeah. There's a boat round down there. You could... Yeah. You could so it is a river. We camp here. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a river. Yeah. Oh, we could. We got power. We got yeah. beer. We got food. Um, probably need permission for this guy's farm. I don't want to get shot at. That's all right. Cool. I reckon cool. we just turn it off. All right, done. Let's hold that down.